In this video and the next however many videos in this mini-series, I'm going to be focusing on valuing precious metals like gold and silver and their price action, especially as it relates to failing currencies, inflation and hyperinflation. To start with, I'll talk about the price of gold and silver and how it's determined. Then I'll go on to talk about price suppression and I'll touch on how and why this market manipulation happens. Then I'll go on to look at the price of gold as it relates to the dollar and its price action over time, particularly since the setting up of the Federal Reserve in 1913. And I'll also look at precious metals in inflationary and hyperinflationary environments. I won't be going into great detail about any of this. This is only supposed to be a, a quick overview. So let's start off by talking about the price of precious metals. There's a bifurcation in the precious metals market in terms of price. What do I mean when I say this? Well, it's simple really. There's a difference between the paper market spot price and the physical market paid for price. What are these though? Well, let's look at the last one first. Anyone wanting to buy actual physical gold or silver bullion or bars does so by approaching a dealer. The buying process is fairly straightforward, much like the purchase of any other product. It's called the over-the-counter trade, but you can purchase precious metals online. Let's look now at the paper market spot price and derivatives. Tradable financial instruments like, like options, futures, tr exchange traded funds, mining stocks and all that malarkey are known as derivatives. The term derivatives comes from the fact the value is derived from the underlying asset or commodity. Without getting too technical, derivatives are financial contracts between two parties which detail the quant price and quantity of an asset. These derivatives can be traded much like the actual product itself. Back to precious metals. The trading of derivatives for precious metals is referred to as the paper market, although I prefer to call it synthetic market because it's something of an artificial construct. So I call it synthetic silver, for instance, but it could be called virtual silver or electronic silver. The trades take place in various financial centres around the world. I'll say something about the three biggest ones. Firstly, there's the COMEX. The COMEX is the commodities exchange based in New York. Precious metals like gold and silver are traded there, but so too are ordinary metals like copper, steel and aluminium, etc. The COMEX is the main exchange for the trading of silver and gold, futures and options. Due to the volumes involved, trading on this exchange necessarily influences the world price of precious metals. So it's basically where the precious metals prices are determined. It shouldn't be, but it is. There's another big exchange in London, the LBMA, the London Bullion and Metals Association. Chinese authorities have set up the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Physical trades take place there, but another exchange, the Shanghai Futures Exchange, does a massive amount of synthetic trades, future products, etc. Anyway, globally, the two markets, the paper synthetic market and the physical market, exist along each side of each other. An important point to note with regard to the Western exchanges, the COMEX and the LBMA, there's not necessarily any real relationship between paper silver traded and physical silver bought and sold in dealerships. In the normal course of events, the paper synthetic market could should roughly reflect the state of the physical market. The two prices should be more or less the same, and with most other commodities, this is what happens. The situation with precious metals, however, is unlike commodities in other markets, say like copper. Interestingly, in contrast to Western exchanges, the Shanghai Gold futures are based on the regional benchmark price set in the Shanghai Gold Exchange. But this is definitely not the case in precious metal, metals markets in the West. There's a difference between the spot price and the physical price. There's a bifurcation in the precious metals markets in the West. This means that in practice, ordinary buyers of physical gold or silver will have to pay a premium above the spot price in order to get hold of the product. So this is why you he will hear people talk about price over spot. At the time of producing this video, premiums were pretty high. This means that there is at present a significant difference between the spot price and the physical price. I should say that spot prices and premiums vary all the time and are different for different products being sold. It's important to note that the physical market price is determined by ordinary economic laws of supply and demand. 
the, the premium prices are then more dependent on demand. To my way of thinking, this therefore more closely reflects the real price of precious metals. But I should really qualify this last statement. I said that the physical market price more closely reflects the real price of precious metals. What I mean is more closely than the spot price. Be that as it may, the physical market price is still somewhat bogus as far as I'm concerned. The truth is there's no proper price discovery for either gold or silver. Why not? Well, because of the massive market manipulation in the precious metals markets. Manipulation that's been going on for many, many years. And because the manipulation has gone on for so long, the true price of precious metals is totally unknown at present. Commentators can speculate all they want, but no one really knows what the real price of gold and silver actually is. I think it's safe to say, though, it's likely that it's many multiples higher than the price now. To my way of thinking, there then exists a huge difference between the price now and the, and the true potential price of silver. The suppressed synthetic spot price is not only at odds with the physical market price, but also with the true potential price. It might be helpful to imagine a preci the precious metals like gold and silver as being a gold and silver coloured beach ball. Imagine that our overlords are in a swimming pool doing all they can to hold that beach ball underwater. If they let go for whatever reason, the beach ball will fly up out of the water and they don't want that. This is one of the main reasons why, in my opinion, and the opinion of a good number of other people, that the silver is considered to be the most undervalued asset on the planet. Bear in mind that nothing lasts forever. The man manipulation will come to an end at some point. The suppression will stop. At some point, they are not going to be able to hold that beach ball underwater. The Basel III directives, among other things, are ensuring that this is brought about. Basel III has put a considerable amount of pressure on big bullion banks to become Basel III compliant and to stop their shenanigans in the, in the paper market. Basel III perhaps needs to be discussed in a separate video. In the meantime, suffice to say, we might just see an end to the manipulation in the near future. When the suppression stops, the beach ball will then burst upwards in a very dramatic fashion. The price, what will the price be? I don't know. All I will say is likely that there will be a short period of time in which uh, most likely reach very high prices in currency terms. And then it will come back down and settle on the surface of the water. Where will it settle? Who knows? But be assured, it's going to be substantially higher than now in currency terms. The, sur the surface of the water is way above us at present times. The beach ball analogy, I hope, describes the workings of true price discovery. The surface of the water being the true market price. I split this topic into a number of videos. Um, so there's another however many to follow. In the next video, I'll go on and uh, talk about a little detail about the price suppression. Wise up and rise up.